who bends their arms too early when doing a cleaner snatch. Now, bending the arms early isn't necessarily a main fault if you are able to drive with the legs and allow the arms to be passive and react after the leg drive. So I want you to think of a lift where your arm is like a big, long cable, and in order to lift the weight, your arm has to be that cable that bends only after the weight starts to move up. If you try to bend the arm too soon and try to lift the weight, you're not gonna get as much power or as much of a whipping effect as if you were to keep that arm straighter and allow that weight to fly up as you change direction. So notice how the band stays straight until the weight goes up, and then the arms will bend after the fact. As the mantra goes, when the arms bend, the power ends. Usually when the arms are bending, what it does is it removes the power that you get from the legs and it pulls the weight away from that position of power. So often I see lifters not trust their lower body to lift the weight and think that they have to muscle it up with the arms and then try to launch it after the fact. And this prevents your lower body from transferring the power effectively into the arms. These are a couple tricks and drills that I have to help you learn how to keep those arms more patient so that you can trust that lower body to do the work for you and then lift the arms after them. The first tip I have is take the tension away from your elbows and shoulder blades. So I know in a deadlift, we tend to squeeze back with the lats, really tighten up our upper back, squeeze our elbows, everything is really firm. We actually don't wanna do that with weightlifting. We want the upper body to be more loose and reactive only after the weight goes up. So often I see lifters starting with really tense back. So even though you are pulling with your lats and you gotta be firm with your back, what ends up happening is we end up squeezing our shoulders back and, and tensing the muscles uh, around our elbows. And so we start with a really tight and tense upper body. And when we tense that upper body, then it doesn't allow our lower body to be able to put power to the bar. So just like the cable or that, that band, the band is loose, okay? The band does not have any tension aside from the weight pulling down on it. So we wanna train our upper body to be a little bit more loose and reactive. One way to do that is to turn your elbows sideways instead of back. So if the elbows are sideways, what that does is it allows our arms to hang a little bit straighter. Often if we bend the elbows back, we're already trying to squeeze our, our, our back a lot more aggressively than we need to, but it also changes the trajectory of the bar to go out. So I want you to actually turn your elbows sideways and leave a little bit of space underneath your armpits so they're not hugging back really tight. You can still use your lats to hold the bar in, but we're gonna take away that really tight squeezing against the upper body and allow it to loosen and open up. So spread your shoulder blades open if they are squeezed back, so allow them to open. Let those elbows hang sideways, and then as you are approaching the bar, just kind of jiggle your arms a bit, okay? So take out any of that tension from your arms and allow your arms to just hang long, firm grip, okay? But allow the arms to just hang and dangle long and straight, just like a band. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna practice doing some jumps, keeping those arms straight from the hang position. So I have my hook grip, I've got my hands wrapped around, fingers wrapped around the thumbs, elbows are sideways, shoulder blades are spread, keeping a little space in the armpit. And we're gonna just practice jumping up and down with the arms straight. So notice I'm not allowing my arms to bend at all. I'm just focusing on lowering the bar and jumping with those arms straight. And then as you get comfortable doing that above the knee, then we can start to lower it below the knee. And still continue more jumps as you are lowering that bar towards the floor. Okay. So biggest thing is jump the legs. You're doing jumps with the legs and your arms are being stretched long, pulling the bar. So we're doing some drills, nothing about pulling up the bar because we're not doing the turnover. We're just gonna focus on winding up and jumping our legs back and forth, keeping those arms long and straight. And this is a really great drill to practice with light weight. So you can get used to preventing that early arm bend and keeping those arms patient through the pull. Now do this with lighter weight so that you don't uh, get hasty and feel like you can't trust being able to do it. So you know, starting with the lighter weight, something that you know you can clean or, or snatch super easily so that you can focus on legs and then arms. So the next thing is 
adding a turnover. So the turnover either and the snatch or the clean. So I want you to really exaggerate and emphasize how arms are being stretched. And I actually feel the bar almost pulling against the arms for a split second before I turn over. And what will help with that is not pulling the bar into you like this, where the bar is tight against your body, but allowing a tiny bubble of space. So a, a, you know, a little bit of a bubble where those arms reach out long and then whip around rather than pulling it in, because that pulling in tight is what causes our upper body to get too tense and to bend the arms early. If we allow those arms to stretch long and bubble away for just a split second in the turnover, so that's gonna look something like this, versus here. So you can see the difference in the two. One, I pulled the bar in. I didn't get as much power with the legs the first one. I kept the arms long and allowed a tiny bit more of a bubble to go around. That's gonna allow your legs to put more power into the bar and your arms to react only after it. Now when I say bubble, I don't mean like loop the bar away like this. I mean keep those arms, you know, pointed vertical to the floor, keep some space under your armpit and rotate the heads of your shoulders slightly in instead of back so that that bar can whip around rather than loop around. Okay, so having that bar whip versus loop, where the bar is pulling away from you. We want to keep that bar still close, but we want to still allow those arms to stay straight rather than hugging the bar and letting the bar run into you too tight. So, um, practice jumping, exaggerating, arms are long and straight, and then whipping them around. So, in slow motion, we're doing jump, arms. Jump. Arms. Okay, so I want you to feel your hips and knees open and bend the arms right after that. Jump and then arms. This will take a little bit of practice. Obviously, to if you've already learned a lot of old habits, it's gonna be really hard to fix and correct that. What we can do is just build that trust, starting with some lighter weights, working on those drills. Hopefully, a couple of these cues, elbows out, space under the armpits, shoulder blades spread, shoulders turn in, will allow you to Think about keeping those arms less tense from the start and a little bit more loose and long and then feeling that bar pulling against your arms right before you turn it over. And again, the getting the timing does take a bit of practice. It's immediate. It goes legs and then arms. It's not legs and then arms. So um, working on feeling that your hips and legs have fully jumped and then the arms pull you under the bar. 